A conservative watchdog group says that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security funded a counter-extremism program that linked mainstream conservatives to Nazis. But wait, is that true? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Is the Biden administration attacking conservatives and Christians? In this episode, we're going to be talking about how they're getting lumped in together with neo-Nazis, so I'm pretty sure YouTube will demonetize and probably age-restrict this episode. The only way we can afford to keep making episodes like this is with your support. You can contribute to America Uncovered on our crowdfunding platform on patreon.com slash americauncovered, or our exclusive social media community on americancover.locals.com. Links to both are below. So Fox News claims that a University of Dayton program linking Christians, Republicans, and other mainstream conservative groups to Nazis was granted DHS funds under an anti-terror initiative. But is that what actually happened? It's time for another edition of, wait, is that true? Last Thursday, the Media Research Center, a conservative watchdog group, released a report called How Biden's DHS is Weaponizing an Anti-Terror Program Against Conservatives, Christians, and the GOP. Exposed. Catchy title. We could learn a thing or two from these guys. In the report, they said they learned how the Biden administration is weaponizing a government-funded anti-terrorism grant program in an effort to destroy conservatives, Christians, and the Republican Party. Now, that's quite an accusation. The program they're talking about is the Targeted Violence and Terrorism Prevention Grant Program, or TVTP. It's a DHS program designed to give money to local organizations to fight terrorism on the ground level. According to the Media Research Center, the TVTP gave money to the University of Dayton to create a program called Prevents O. That stands for Preventing Radicalization to Extremist Violence Through Education, Network Building, and Training in Southwest Ohio. Yes, it's not just governments that love to make fancy acronyms. Even universities are obsessed with it. According to the Media Research Center, the University of Dayton used grants from TVTP to create the infamous Prevents O program, which in turn hosted a series of events that maliciously equated mainstream organizations with neo-Nazis and other extremist hate groups. One of the first Prevents O events was a seminar called Extremism, Rhetoric, and Democratic Precarity. Precarity means the state of being uncertain. So the claim is that the DHS gave taxpayer dollars to the University of Dayton to create a program that attacked conservatives at a seminar. There's just one problem. The timeline doesn't quite add up. In 2021, the University of Dayton's Human Rights Center held its yearly multiple-day Social Practice of Human Rights Seminar, or Sphere 21. Love those acronyms. It was called Between Peril and Potential. This episode is just full of tantalizing titles. The stated goal of the seminar was to address the challenges and opportunities the pandemic has created for human rights advocacy. In actuality, it was a hot mess. Based on the way it promoted things like critical, intersectional, and decolonial feminist approaches, you can definitely tell from the get-go that the seminar approached human rights advocacy from a very leftist perspective. And it had some noteworthy speakers who had plenty to say about right-wing extremism. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. In 2021, the University of Dayton's Human Rights Center hosted a seminar called The Social Practice of Human Rights Between Peril and Potential. The seminar included a presentation called Extremism, Rhetoric, and Democratic Precarity. Among the speakers was a researcher at the University of Cincinnati, Michael Lodenthal, who, according to his bio, has worked alongside anarchist, anti-racist, environmental direct action, reproductive health, anti-war, and anti-capitalist movements. He's also, and this may surprise you, anti-Trump, as he was among the 200 people arrested during the J-20 protests against Trump's inauguration. During his presentation for the conference, Lodenthal showed this pyramid, which he called the Pyramid of Far-Right Radicalization. 
Towards the bottom, it includes a bunch of mainstream right-leaning organizations such as the Republican Party, the Heritage Foundation, Fox News, Breitbart News, the NRA, Prager University, the Christian Broadcasting Network, and a bunch more. Towards the top, it includes neo-Nazis and white supremacists, like The Base and The Daily Stormer. Lodenthal appeared to use the pyramid to create a progression from mainstream conservatism to extremism. This is the modern far right, as articulated by, by uh, uh, what I think are some smart folk. Uh, we have a tiered system here between mainstream conservatism on the bottom, and then what we look at the top, accelerationists and uh, folks who are engaging in active violence. This obviously didn't sit well for a lot of people, especially those like Fox News or the GOP, who found themselves in a so-called tiered system with neo-Nazis. But Lodenthal had a lot more to say. On top of linking the mainstream right to neo-Nazis, Lodenthal practically endorsed leftist canceling in another presentation during the same conference. It was called Patriotism, Pandemic, and Prosperity. But on YouTube, it's just called the White Nationalism Workshop. Interesting choice. In this presentation, Lodenthal spoke about how anti-fascists could contact employers, landlords, commanding officers, school officials, family, and clergy, and pressure financial services, retailers, and service providers to de-platform far-right fascists. Lodenthal also displayed an infographic of how anti-fascists could collect data, identify targets, to create dossiers, and disrupt fascists. He even gave specific advice on how to create dummy accounts on social media platforms like Gab, Telegram, and Rumble in order to paralyze movements and manufacture infighting, even if it meant going against the law. And given that he linked fascists to the mainstream right and Christians, you can see how this could be a problem. Other speakers at the seminar also helped blur the line between the mainstream right and fascists. Alexander Hinton, a professor at Rutgers University who specializes in genocide, compared the Trump administration to the Khmer Rouge, a communist regime that killed a quarter of Cambodia's population. The reason? Trump read a poem called The Snake, which many take to be an allegory to criminal illegal immigrants. Hinton pointed out that the Khmer Rouge called the Vietnamese crocodiles, so there must be a connection. Meanwhile, Nicole Wittershelm of Human Rights Watch accused Florida Governor Ron DeSantis of potentially setting up a personal army to do unspeakable things. Listen to what people are saying, including the extremists. Like you, if people tell you what they want to do early on, this is also one of the deep lessons of the Holocaust, you have to listen. Um, I noticed that the governor of Florida today said he wants to develop his own armed uh, state force. I think we need to really listen to him and why he wants to do that. This was in response to DeSantis proposing to revive a civilian volunteer force to help the National Guard during emergencies like hurricanes. Nearly half of all U.S. states have one of these. The speakers clearly have a strong left-leaning bias against anyone right of Stalin. And the seminar was insane, but was it funded by the DHS? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. The University of Dayton Human Rights Center hosted a conference where mainstream conservative organizations, including the GOP, were linked to right-wing extremists. But was the conference funded by the DHS? Well, no. The University of Dayton Human Rights Center did receive funding from the DHS to set up their program, Prevent O, and they did see the program as a continuation of the work they started at the Sphere 21 conference. But they got the funding and established the program in 2022, a year after the conference. The funding comes through an initiative called the Targeted Violence and Terrorism Prevention Grant Program, or TVTP. TVTP started off as a 2011 Obama-era plan called the Empowering Local Partners to Prevent Violent Extremism in the United States. It sought to give tax-funded grants to universities, nonprofits, and other local groups to prevent domestic violent extremism, which at the time focused on Islamist extremists like al-Qaeda. The grants didn't start rolling out until 2016, but then the Trump administration halted the program. In 2019, the DHS resurrected it as the TVTP. Whether Trump was on board is under debate. Politico says the DHS went around Trump to get funding for the program. During the 2020 presidential race, then-candidate Biden's campaign website vowed that he would end the TVTP to stop it from targeting the Arab-American community. 
and he said he will ensure that programs are properly oriented toward actual threats based on data. But once he came to office, Biden created his own version of the program and added the Center for Prevention Programs and Partnerships under the Department of Homeland Security to counter domestic radical extremism. Throughout Biden's term, the TVTP has awarded 80 grants worth $40 million to promote media literacy and online critical thinking initiatives. One of these grants, worth over $350,000, went to the University of Dayton to create Prevento. So, the DHS did fund the University of Dayton's program, and the University of Dayton did host a conference where mainstream conservatives were linked to right-wing extremists, but the funding came after the conference. Don't you feel better? The Biden administration just gave funds to a group that was already linking mainstream conservatives and Christians to neo-Nazis. In response to the Media Research Center's report, Lodenthal told Fox News that the center misinterpreted and misrepresented the diagram, which he didn't make. He said the chart is meant to show that what is termed the right is not monolithic and that some individuals travel to a path of radicalization, beginning with more mainstream sources. Oh, okay, so it's just saying that Fox News is a gateway drug for neo-Nazis. Got it. He went on to say this point is not controversial, nor is it deterministic. It is not meant to imply that engaging with level 1 inherently leads to level 4. That would obviously be false. But he's definitely implying that involvement with the organization he listed could lead to radicalization. And apparently he also thinks that well-established organizations like the Heritage Foundation, a Washington-based think tank, are in the same category as underground cells of militants. Lodenthal is also implicitly saying that what's not on the list won't lead to radicalization. Try making a pyramid where left-wing organizations like the Democrats and the Huffington Post are on the bottom and Antifa and the Revolutionary Communist Party of the United States are on top. See how people will respond to that. It's pretty dishonest to imply that MAGA is only one step away removed from the Daily Stormer, and that people like Trump and DeSantis are like genocidal maniacs. The seminar is drawing enough negative attention that Lodenthal has made his Twitter account private. And both the University of Dayton and the DHS are now trying to distance themselves from the event. Dayton said, the speakers at the program referred to in the Media Research Center's report are from the University of Dayton's Human Rights Center's Social Practice of Human Rights Conference in the fall of 2021, which had no affiliation with and predates Prevenso. They're banking on the fact that the university received the grant in fall 2022. And that's true, but it's also true that its grant application to the DHS linked to recordings of the event. The DHS said it didn't fund, organize, or host the seminar. It also said the pyramid chart was not developed, presented, or endorsed by the department and was not part of any successful grant application. They just gave money to the group after it was already abundantly clear that it was targeting conservatives and Christians. That is not much better. The pyramid was not in the grant application, but the grant application referenced the seminar where the pyramid was presented. Also, a DHS official belonging to Biden's Center for Prevention Programs and Partnerships and TVTP participated and spoke at the seminar. So the DHS was involved even before the grant. Unfortunately, this seems very in line with the ideology of Biden's DHS. The DHS says it does not profile, target, or discriminate against any individual for exercising their constitutional rights protected by the First Amendment. But earlier this month, America First Legal obtained documents showing how the DHS listed pro-life mothers as potential radicalization suspects in a violence prevention training guide just days after President Biden took office. Among a bunch of examples of domestic extremists is a middle-aged pro-life advocate who is religiously devout. It asks readers to make real-life decisions to address different scenarios with the pro-life advocate. The DHS blames that on a contractor and claims it was created during the Trump administration, but was not further produced, approved, or used by the DHS. But given that the FBI under the Biden administration published a memo targeting radical traditionalist Catholics, and link them with far-right white nationalists, I wouldn't be surprised if the DHS did think pro-lifers were connected with far-right white nationalists. So what do you think of the DHS and its counter-extremism programs? 
leave your comments below. And remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. If you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, all it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.